Hi, my name is William Kenny. My partner is Will Knox. And we did the power pole DC to DC converter project with an emphasis on the fly forward converter. During this uh, video, I'm going to talk to you about the power pole DC to DC converter board. I'll give you an overview of the board. I'll talk about the different equipment needed for the experiments, as well as some of the features of the board. And then my partner, Will Knox, will tell you about the fly forward converter and show you the, the output of that circuit. So, this is the power pole DC to DC converter board. It is a reconfigurable circuit board. You change, you change the configuration of the circuit by wiring the different uh, configurations of these four metal terminals, as well as swapping out the daughter board here, which is connected via four banana clips. So it's a pretty handy device. Uh, everything else is connected by banana clips. The, the voltage input and the voltage output are all plugged into banana clips here, as well as this board does come with its own uh, power supply. Uh, the equipment needed for the experiments, you need uh, a oscilloscope with capturing capabilities and take data and start on the computer. You need your own DMM to record data that way as well for the DC. You need a very low resistor capable of going between 7 ohms and 20 ohms so you can see how the, the effect of load changes your output. You need a DC power supply capable of doing 0 to 60 volts at 2 amps. So when you're working with uh, that kind of power, safety is a concern. So we did actually blow a fuse in this board by dropping a lead on it. So you don't want to be careful. Uh, and the other equipment you need is, of course, the, the board, its power supply, and its, and its daughter boards for changing the configuration. The features of this board are pretty nice. Every MOSFET and diode has a voltage probe across it. So you can see the switching characteristics of those elements. There is also current probes. There are current to voltage converters on the board, as well as current probes that come out of there. So every half amp of current going through those probes comes out as one volt on the probe. So you can measure the, the current that way. Another feature is that this board does have its own driving circuit for every topology. So that's pretty handy when you're doing your experiments. And with the three daughter boards that come with it, you can run uh, nine experiments, nine different experiments that come in the lab manual, and they include the configurations of buck boost to buck boost, uh, flyback and fly forward converter. And so there's a lot of information that can be obtained uh, from this board. And so now to talk to you about the fly forward converter, here's my partner, Will Knox. Thanks, Will. My name is Will Knox, and I'll be talking about the forward converter. So as we know, this is a buck converter. Uh, the switch switches, the inductor, uh, prevents the current from jumping when the switch switches, so it sucks up any extra voltage, and then it freewheels through this diode. Problems with a buck converter are that it's tied to the ground, and also there's a high side switch here, um, which is hard to drive. So to solve this problem, we can just stick a transformer right in here. with a low side switch. So if this is an ideal transformer, the voltage across here is exactly the same as the voltage across here. Um, so you're switching this, which switches the voltage, which essentially puts the same square wave here as it would if the switch were here and there were no transformer. Um, one problem that looks like it would be a problem is if you've got current going through this inductor and you suddenly open the switch, there's no, where, no place for the current to go. But that's not a problem because it can just freewheel through this diode. Now, when you put voltage across this inductor, it builds up current during the on time, and then when you turn it off, it just freewheels through this diode. So there's no way to decrease the current through the transformer, and it'll just build up and build up until your transformer is saturated and everything explodes. So to solve that problem, we can put another diode here, and another coil on this transformer. So what this does is, when you turn the switch off, the current can't go through here because there's a switch here. It can't go through here because there's this diode here, but it can go through here. But in order to go through here, it has to go through this power supply. So the power supply puts minus 20 volts across this coil 
um, when you had 20 volts during the on time, you have 20 volts during the off time, so it takes just as long for the current to dissipate as it does to build up. Now, the problem with that is you can't have a duty cycle over 50%, otherwise there isn't enough time to dissipate that current. One solution to that problem is to use um, a lower number of turns on this coil so that it sees, the transformer sees more voltage, like it thinks there's more voltage across here to dissipate that current. But the other problem with that is when you have, when the switch opens, it has VCC across it because there's no current through here. But then it also has the voltage across this multiplied by the turns ratio across here. So it has VCC, at least two VCC, and if you decrease the turns ratio here, that'll amplify the voltage here. So you'll your switch will have more switch stress across it. Um, so to solve that problem, what you do is you use a one-to-one -one turns ratio here with a duty cycle less than 50%, and if you need a, a higher voltage, then you can just increase the turns ratio here, no problem. Um, so the, the power pole forward converter, um, since it is an experiment and you don't want to have voltages floating around, it just connects right here, which doesn't really change the circuit any. Um, obviously, if you wanted to float this, you would just erase that line and proceed as usual. So now let me show you the forward converter on the power pole board. Um, we have it set up here. This is the uh, transformer with the, the three coils on it. And then this is the output inductor of the essentially the buck converter. Uh, the output capacitance and the output resistance, which we have 10 ohms. Um, so if you look at the oscilloscope here, as I said, um, the current is positive when the switch is on through the trend. This is the input current of the DC source. So the current is positive when the switch is on, but then when the switch turns off, the current is negative, which happens because of that other coil there. Um, and as you can see, the amount of time that it's on is about the same as the amount of time that it dissipates. So and we can change the duty cycle to show that. But if we try to increase the duty cycle beyond 50%, we get a huge jump in current. And if you notice, that happens when this, rather than having this break in it, that happens when this has a straight line. So we're not allowing enough time for the current to dissipate in through here. So we're just shoving more and more current through here and saturating the transformer. Um, which doesn't allow it to dissipate current. Um, so we did our experiments on this with varying duty cycles and frequencies and resistances. Um, and we tried to verify that it, the buck e uh, converter equations apply to the forward converter with uh, um, the turns ratio difference. And we verified that it does. The forward converter has about a 75% efficiency um, in this particular uh, power pole configuration. Um, and so that's our video. Thanks for watching.